In this video, we're going to talk about how you can improve your performance through one of the more difficult sections you'll find out on the track, chicanes. Where a simple corner can be broken down into small chunks to deal with in a logical sequence, a chicane, particularly a tighter one, will require a little more agility and concentration, with many actions overlapping more than they otherwise would. Here, I want to cover how we go about tackling these sometimes tricky corners, as well as what you can do to minimize the time spent going through them. So first, let's look at an overview of how we get the most out of them, and then we'll go into a little more detail later. In your typical chicane, there'll be two main factors that will determine how fast you can get through them. The first is how quickly you're able to go from full lean right to full lean left, or the other way around, and the second is maximizing the time spent upright, if the chicane allows it. Let's first quickly cover the speed of your change of direction. In a large majority of chicanes, the speed at which you can steer the bike and change direction is going to dictate a vast majority of the speed that you can carry through it. If you can be lightning quick getting your bike from one side to the other, you'll be able to carry considerably more speed through that chicane over someone who has a very slow steering rate. If that slower steering rider tried to go through at the same speed, they'd quickly find themselves massively missing apexes or worse, running out of track. So steering is part one. But what about maximizing the time spent upright? In many chicanes, there'll be a period of time where you can utilize the bike being upright. And by that, I mean utilizing the brakes or throttle to help keep the average speed up through the whole section, which means the chicane itself, as well as what comes before and after it. And this period is most obvious in larger chicanes where the corners are more spaced out. Now, truthfully, these probably aren't really considered chicanes by a true definition, but they're still worth talking about. Maggots and Beckett's at Silverstone is a perfect example. If we watch Mark Marquez through this flip-flop section, you can hear that the throttle doesn't remain off through that whole section. Now, this can be a little misleading because the revs will naturally rise and drop as he moves from the widest and narrowest parts of the tire. But even so, it's clear that he's using both acceleration and maintenance throttle through the whole section to keep the average speed up. But even in tighter chicanes where the apexes are closer together, there can still be an opportunity to add speed in the short period that the bike is more upright. As you can see, Marquez accelerates slightly between the first and second apex as the bike starts to stand up and transition over. Now, that's mainly about utilizing the throttle, but there's actually some instances where you can do the opposite and use the brakes during the transition, which is normally dictated by what comes before that chicane. The chicane at the end of the back straight at Snetterton is a really good example of this. The speed before the chicane is very high, so there's an opportunity to use the brakes in the middle during the transition. This helps us in two ways. Firstly, it actually helps the bike change direction because you're putting more weight on the front, which just helps stand the bike up and continue leaning and steering to the right. Secondly, it extends the time you have to set your speed for that second apex. What a lot of newcomers do is set their speed for around the first tipping point at the end of the straight, and then remain off the throttle and brakes until after the second apex. This means they're at the mercy of the speed they have at that first tipping point, and it makes it very difficult to increase the speed going into the chicane because you now have no way to adjust it. Instead, if you utilize the brakes during the transition period, you have more time to set your speed, meaning you can accelerate for longer down the straight, brake later, and enter the section faster, all of which saves you time. Now, you won't always use the throttle and the brakes in the middle of chicanes, but chances are there are places where you can gain time doing so in some of the chicanes that you ride. Okay, now let's get a bit more specific and look at the process. Firstly, getting the bike steered. And for this, let's assume we have a chicane with a right turn followed by a left turn. If you've followed me for any length of time, hopefully by now you'll know that it's counter steering which allows us to steer the bike and change direction effectively. 
To initiate steering in the first right-hander, you'd have to be pushing on the inside bar, in this case the right one, and the bike will begin to lean and steer in that direction. When the time comes that you want to then lean the bike over to the left, initially you'll pull on that same right bar and the bike will begin to stand up. As it comes more vertical and you get your body over to the other side, you'll transition to using the left bar by pushing on that so the bike continues to lean left down to your desired lean angle. And only once you've reached your desired lean angle for that left hand corner should you stop pushing on the bar. How aggressive you are with the bars will dictate how quickly the bike goes from full lean right to full lean left. The more force you put through those bars, the quicker it's going to react. Knowing that is good for getting the change of direction done quickly, but remember we still want to be smooth. That being said, at higher speeds it is harder to change direction of the bike due to the dynamics of it. So sometimes I find it necessary to both pull and push on the bars at the same time to get the bike moving in the direction you want it to go. Because sometimes you need to put considerable force through the bars to actually get it to change direction. Okay, now let's look at the body position throughout. The type of chicane you're traveling through will change how you position yourself through the whole section. If it's a very quick flip-flop chicane, for example, you may not have time, or rather it would be a waste of time to try and actually get into the proper cornering position through both the first and second corners of that chicane. You may not really get off to the inside for the first part to instead concentrate on getting your body position right for the exit of the second part. Yes, having the right body position for cornering will help the bike, but be mindful in very tight and fast chicanes that all that effort getting into the perfect position could be counterproductive. The chicane at Cadwell Park is a good example of this, where riders forfeit the proper hang-off for the first right-hand corner simply because it would make the second part more difficult. So how do we change over in typical chicanes? This part can be tricky because it requires you to steer the bike quickly while getting over to the other side of the bike without upsetting it too much. Ideally what you want to do is start to shift your lower body over to the other side by shifting your backside across as you start to turn or even better before you start turning if you have the time. Getting your lower body over earlier will minimize unwanted inputs into the bars as you alter the bike's lean and shift your weight across. Another way to minimize unwanted inputs is to clamp the tank with your knees as you slide your backside across. This will mean you're stabilizing yourself with your knees on the tank rather than solely relying on your hands to stabilize yourself on the bars. And once you've moved your lower body over to the opposite side, your upper body will pretty much follow the flow of the bike. So as the bike stands up, you'll bring your head into the center of the bike. Then as you lean into the second part of the chicane, you'll once again move back to the inside. Okay, that's it for this one. I would love to hear of your experiences of chicanes and what you think you struggle with most. Tell me about it in the comments down below. But outside of that, thank you so much for watching this one and remember to subscribe to the channel for more performance writing advice and guides moving forward. Take care.